What are good reasons to live? If anyone in this thread needs to reach out to talk with someone, please see some of the resources below. There's, r, suicide watch where well-meaning and sympathetic people will try and help, but be aware they aren't trained. The, befrienders, website is a global list of local suicide help charities. Use it to find an organization in your country, you should be able to call or email them for free and they'll speak to you and try and help you without being judgmental. Dying sucks. Death seems okay, but it's the stuff before that that I'd rather not deal with just yet. Outlive your enemies. Honestly, I just want to ride it out and see what happens. Us humans are so entertaining. One minute we're blowing each other up, the next we have pet rocks or something. Floating in a large body of water with no distractions. Also, did you know that if you float on your back in a hot tub with all the jets on that you'll spin in a lazy little circle? I did not know that and it's pretty fun. It's also quite relaxing. If you're careful you can do it while reading a book. If you haven't had a chance to try that yet, you should hang on at least until you do. It's pretty rad. So you can say to the person mugging you and threatening to kill you, what makes you think I have money? Or a will to live? If you quit now you won't get to play the futuristic video games we'll actually have the technology to make 99% immersive. Music is pretty neat. You can literally just make garlic bread anytime you want. Because if you die, it can't get better. Right now, I'm a shaking, emotional mess because I hit rock bottom last night. I am still here because I know from experience that as long as I don't give up, my life has the chance to get better. Hopefully it will but the only way I'll see is by sticking around. If you die mom will be upset. I have written this out elsewhere, but since everything I want to say has stayed the same, I'll just copy it here. I had a couple major realizations. Self-talk, I was intensely, harshly critical of myself. One day I realized that I would never talk to another person like that, so why should I talk to myself that way? I made the decision to treat myself as though I was a friend who had the same issues. I would treat myself kindly with compassion, and allow myself to be imperfect, even very imperfect. This is very important, I decided to make a point of noticing what I did right, well, and good in the same way I'd focused exclusively on what I did wrong before. It's important especially for someone in or coming out of depression to see and admit to themselves that yes, they do things right, too. It doesn't matter how tiny or inconsequential the action is. Did you brush your teeth today? Nice, you brushed your teeth today. Fair warning, this change in behavior will likely feel fake as hell at first, and will continue feeling fake as hell for a long time. It's normal for a behavior pattern you aren't in the habit of to feel fake, but that doesn't mean it is fake, it's just an unfamiliar pattern. As the pattern becomes familiar, the feeling of fakeness will fade. The other thing was that I realized when you are depressed, you naturally tend to focus on what's bad and wrong in life. You don't even notice the good stuff, even though it's still there. If you go long enough noticing only bad things while being oblivious to the good, it can legitimately get to a point where it really, genuinely feels to you like only bad things exist for you and that good stuff doesn't even exist at all. Therefore, I made a deliberate point of noticing what's right and good in life. There's a roof over my head tonight and I have a warm, dry, comfortable bed to sleep in, I have my health, I can have pretty much anything I want for dinner, I am incredibly lucky to live in that incredibly tiny fraction of all of human history that the internet exists, it's a lovely day out today, I lost a couple more pounds, I really do have exceptionally awesome landlords, I was really kind to that person, I got the dishes done today, etc. Fair warning, this is another thing that's going to feel fake as hell for a long time until you get into the habit of it. Expect it, it's normal and fine. I pushed through the fake feeling and it made a life-changing difference for me that I did. One more thing, let it be genuinely okay for yourself to make mistakes. Old habits and thought patterns can have a lot of inertia to them. Depressed people are still people, and people are just human beings, which means they will make mistakes. If you can let it be genuinely okay to be a human being who makes mistakes just like anyone else does, don't beat up on yourself for making them, just shrug, let it roll off your back, and carry on, you will have a much easier time of all of this on those days you find old habits creeping back again. Also, after you've gotten a bit out of depression, check out this excellent post about non-zero days. If you are deep in depression right now this might be too much just yet, and it's honestly okay if it is. One step at a time. Just focus on noticing the things you do right for now, on the positives around you.
Pasta. The smell of a fresh rain, the smell of flowers, being able to cuddle your pet, the taste of your favorite food, being able to finish out your favorite TV shows. I read this on a similar Ask Reddit, where all lights in the darkness for one another. When one light goes out, it makes it that much more dark for the rest of us. The human eye can see a single candle from four miles away. You never know when your light is the only light someone can see. Quote. If you have pets they'll never understand why you left. Cyberpunk. Dead tongues taste no pineapple juice. Because the 22 of February 2022 is the 22nd of February 22 and it is also a Tuesday, meaning we can call it Tuesday. Simple, I'm not done here, and I guess I'm not allowed to die until I am. I've fluffin tried to kill myself, drove my car off a forest ravine at 95 miles per hour, fluffin went right through the trees for about 50 feet then landed under the road on the other side of the S bend. Car had a small dent in the front bumper, and half inch chip missing, both from the winding road sign I took out right before the ravine, but not a scratch otherwise. I went back to look, there was no gap between the trees big enough for a car. Years later, I tried to blow my brains out with shotgun. Pulled the trigger, nothing happened. Sat there for like 10 seconds, then took the barrel away from under my chin, and the exact second it was clear, it went off, jumping out of my hands and missing me by a few degrees. So yeah, I don't know what the fluff I believe in, but if there is a god, I guess he wants me to stay on earth for a while longer, presumably because I'm supposed to help someone. Figure I'll just help as many people as I can until I hit my quota or whatever and eventually get to die. Woo. To see if the Area 51 raid actually happens. I don't have reasons to live I only have reasons to not die. Despite how similar those sound they are different, and most people who are content with their lives won't be able to make the distinction. Edit, Jesus fluff people, I posted this before passing out and woke up to like 100 replies. I am sure you all have better things to do than give my depressed edgy comment gold. To live to the day April 20th 69 happens. You've been dead for eternity before you were born. Let that sink in, an infinite amount of time where you did not exist. And for a universal split second you're alive, after which you will stop existing for an infinite amount of time. In the grand scheme of things, being alive is literally the least likely thing that could have happened. And yet here you are. I just don't see a future for me. It's impossible for me to imagine a possible future. I'm just lost and don't want to feel sad all the time anymore. Knowing that you are somehow in some way a part of someone's day and routine and if you disappeared their life would be missing something. That you never know what'll happen tomorrow, and it just might be something good. If you have a pet, no one could possibly love and bond with them like you could. And that living would spite everyone that wanted you not to. Sunshine and wind. Sometimes in the deepest pits of my depression and when I'm ready to end it, I'll go for a walk and the sun is just so darn beautiful and warm, that I stay alive just so I can keep seeing it. See, I like to think I'm etching myself into the paths of every atom I touch. Even after the solar system is dust, there will be motes directly or indirectly affected by the fact I lived a life at some point. These things will have their trajectories forever marked by my existence, even if they are small and quiet particles or wakes of heat. Perhaps my actions will inspire others and the far-off entropies will have a little more ripple as a result. IHAVRADHD, autism and I have constant anxiety and intermittent depression. I have experienced being suicidal often in my life, but I don't think I'm in danger of dying. D Good reasons for me not to die, my husband. He is a terrific emotional support and all-around great human and I just wanna be around him. He likes me a lot and I wouldn't ever wanna hurt him by just up and dying for no reason, let alone doing it on purpose. Even at my most depressed, I would literally never imagine doing that to him, the concept of his pain is so enormously painful to think of that it's like an object too hot for me to touch. No. My cat's my co-workers, who struggle with mental health as well. My industry took it hard when Anthony Bourdain killed himself. My co-workers are all speaking up about how garbage tea we all feel and we're actually supporting each other my friends, who struggle with mental health as well. Same as above people on the internet that I provide emotional support for, because if I kill myself, I can't be the voice of reason and understanding for everyone else that feels this way. Every person that kills themselves is eliminating an opportunity to increase understanding of mental illness and human neurodiversity.
Every person that kills themselves is giving suicide an advantage in the fight against humanity because other people with ADHD and autism need people to speak up for them, we are collectively really fluffing garbage tea at articulating. Because other people with ADHD and autism that don't know they even are and that it's why they're fluffing suicidal in the first Godern place, hey, hi. I see you, help is coming Godern it just hang in there because I'm not dying without fixing this garbage and that is a Godern threat.